Okay, another shocker du jour. I'm going to assume you have not read Pista Sophia, The Wisdom of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to just read it to you and we're going to discuss it as we go along. Jesus came back to earth after he was crucified for, I believe it was 11 years. And he, he worked with all the disciples and his mother Mary and Mary Magdalene and all of them. And um, this is what was written about it. Now, after he rose from the dead, his 12 disciples and seven women continued to be his followers. He went to Galilee onto the mountain called Divination and Joy. When they gathered together and were perplexed about the underlying reality of the universe, I mean, they must have been just blown away. I mean, here he came back. So they're perplexed about the underlying reality of the universe and the plan. What was the plan? And the holy providence. Who was providing? Who was doing all this stuff? And the power of the authorities. Who are the authorities? All right? And they were also confused about everything the Savior is doing with them in the secret of the holy plan. The Savior appeared not in his previous form. So he came back as light. So he didn't come back as his previous form, as a person-looking thing, but in the invisible spirit. No. His likeness resembles a great angel of light, but his resemblance I must not describe. No mortal flesh could endure it, but only pure, perfect flesh, like that which he taught us about on a mountain called the Mount of Olives in Galilee. No. So he said, Peace be unto you, my peace I give you. And they all marveled and were afraid. The Savior laughed and said to them, What are you thinking about? Are you perplexed? What are you searching for? Philip said, For the underlying reality of the universe and, and, and the plan. What is this plan? What's going on here? The Savior said to them, I want you to know that all men are born on earth from the foundation of the world until now, being dust, while they have inquired about God, who he is and what he is like, they have not found him. Now the wisest among them have speculated from the ordering of the world and its movements and so forth. They've speculated, but they haven't found him. But their speculation was not reached, has not reached the truth. For it is said that the ordering is directed in three ways. Now there's three possibilities. So nobody agrees. So there's three different ways but by all philosophers. So hence, they don't agree one way or the other. It could be any of those three. But he's, he's going to say it's not, none of them are right. All right. So they do not agree. Some say the world is directed by itself. It just, it's just self-directed, which just means it happens. Others say that it's providence it, that directs it, some provider. Others say it's fate, which is nothing more than the first one, which is just happens. But it is none of these. It's none of those. Again, of the three voices I have just mentioned, none is even close to the truth, and they are from man. These are the musings of man. But I, who came from the infinite light, everything is made of light. I am here, for I know him, I know the light, that I might speak to you about the precise nature of the truth, the truth of everything. We have missed the truth literally about everything literally about everything. For whatever is from itself is a polluted life. Right? If life comes from life, it's already polluted. So it's come, it is self-made. So it's making another copy of something that's already been contaminated. So you've got a problem. Providence has no wisdom in it. And fate does not discern. So forget all those musings. No. But to you, it is given to know. You have to know. You have to have the knowledge. And whoever is worthy of the knowledge will receive it. 
whoever has not been begotten by the sowing of unclean rubbing, but by first who was sent, for he is an immortal in the midst of mortal men. Now, there's nobody that's un there's nobody that's 100% clean. You have to start off by being, in my case, very unclean, and then understanding what the whole thing is about. And then once you understand, you better do what you're supposed to do. All right, that's the key. You, there's no turning back. Once you understand, you're in trouble, you go back. Apparently, you're forgiven for being just an idiot. <laughs> you know, if that's what it was, you were an idiot, you did stupid, ridiculous, stupid things, which was my case. And now I realize how ridiculously stupid they were, and I feel bad every day. And uh, hopefully that's somehow going to wash away my sins, but we'll find out. Or at least I will. Okay, my friends, this is where it gets really kind of crazy. He's talking about being the first who was sent, for he is an immortal in the midst of mortal men. Now Matthew said to him, Lord, no one can find the truth except through you. Therefore, teach us the truth. Well, the truth about what? What are they asking for the truth about? About life? I mean, well, that's kind of a broad question to ask. What is the truth about the truth about what? So let's see if we can figure out what they're, they're asking for the truth about. All right, so Matthew's saying, we need the truth. You have to teach us the truth. And, and I say, the truth about what? Now, the, the Savior said, he who is... So he who is, is ineffable. He's the top guy. He is, is everything. No principle knew him, no authority, no subjugation, nor any creature from the foundation of the world until now, except he alone and anyone to whom he wants to make revelation through him who is from first light. Everything's about light. From now on, I... Oh, hold on. All right, sorry about that. So he says, you know, make revelation through him who is from the first light. The first light made everything happen. Where the first light came from? It's God. And God, there was nothing before him, nothing, no creature, nothing. He was the foundation of everything. He said, from now on, I am the great Savior, for he is immortal and eternal. Now he is eternal, having no birth. For everyone who has birth will perish. He is unbegotten, having no beginning. For everyone who has a beginning has an end. Since no one rules over him, he has no name. For whoever has a name is the creation of another. Somebody named it. All right, he is unnameable. He has no human form. For whoever has human form is the creation of another. He has a semblance of his own, not like what you have seen and received, but a strange semblance that surpasses all things and is better than the universe. It looks to every side and sees itself from itself. Since it is infinite, he is ever incomprehensible. Now, it, it says he a number of times. He is imperishable and has no likeness to anything. He, 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 he. He is unchanging good. He is faultless. He is eternal. He is blessed. While he is not known. Nobody knows him, because they, 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 but he's all these things. While he is not known, he ever knows himself. He's just, he's, he knows everything about himself, and he, he's really directing everything, it appears, is what they're saying. Now, he is perfect, having no defect. He is imperishability blessed. Nothing can happen to him. He is called the father of the universe. So everything belongs to him in this universe. He is the father of the universe. He is the God of all. Philip said, Lord, how then did he appear to the perfect ones? The perfect Savior said to him, before anything is visible of those that are visible, 
So something's not visible, but then it becomes visible. So he says, before anything is visible of those that are visible, the majesty and the authority are in him. Since he embraces the whole of the totalities, which is light, nothing embraces him. For he is all mind, he is thought, and under and considering and reflecting in rationality and power. Here's the theory right there. He is power. And he considers all these things and uses the power. They are all equal powers. They are the sources of the totalities and their whole race from first to last was in his foreknowledge. Right? He was foreknowledge. That of the infinite, the unbegotten Father. Thomas said to him, Lord, Savior, why did these come to be and why were these revealed? The perfect Savior said, I came from the infinite that I might tell you the things, all things. I came to tell you all things. Spirit who is was the begetter, who had the power of a begetter and a form giver's nature. Right, that the great wealth that was hidden in him might be revealed. All right, so don't forget now, he's the spirit who is. He was the begetter. That means he, he begot the children. He, he, he produced them. Who had the power of a begetter and a form giver's nature. So he could make forms. Sounds to me. That the great wealth that was hidden in him might be revealed. So he made him in his own image, was the, what the story was. Now, because of his mercy and his love, he wished to bring forth fruit by himself. So on, on, all by himself he brought these offspring. So he brought fruit by himself that he might not enjoy his goodness alone. He wanted his company. The, the other spirits of the unwavering generation might bring forth body and fruit, glory and honor, just a place of just total happiness in the imperishableness and his infinite grace. Just bestowing all these things on these people that were supposed to, you know, worship him, basically. So... He, he wanted to give fruit and glory and honor and imperishableness and his infinite grace that his treasure might be revealed by self-begotten God. Well, he did God, he made himself. The father of every imperishableness and those that came to be afterward. He created everything and the things he created that are imperishable, he created those too. They had not yet come to visibility until this particular God made them, who is the God of everything. All right, so God, the Father of every imperishableness, and those that came to be afterward, but they had not yet come to visibility. They were all actually light, in my opinion. Now a great di difference exists among the imperishables. All right, a great difference. They're all different frequencies. Basically, light is a bazillion different frequencies, and it's not visible. But it is there. They're particles. And this is what happens with light. They're all these different visibility, all these different frequencies. All right? They had not yet come to visibility. A great difference exists among these imperishables. And they're imperishable. They're light particles. They're not gonna, there's nothing you can do to, to ever get rid of them. They are imperishable. Now he called out saying, Whoever has ears to hear about the infinites, let him hear. And I have addressed those who are awake. Still he continued and said, Everything that came from the perishable will perish, since it came from the perishable. But whatever came from the imperishableness does not perish but becomes imperishable. So many men went astray because they had not known this difference and they died. Now, I'm hoping you'll become imperishable once you understand and adopt that understanding. All right, because then you have come from a place of imperishableness 
bestowed on you through your trials of life. Let's say it that way. I'm hoping. <laughs> All right, so many men went astray because they had not known this difference and they died. All right, Mary said to him, Lord, then how will we know that? And when they say die, they don't mean you're going to die. Everybody dies. That, is, that, that case is closed. They're talking about forever, for eternity. That's when they say when many died. They just, they just couldn't get on the board with the understanding. All right, let's just keep going. It says, The perfect Savior said, Come, you, from invisible things to the end of those that are visible, which is matter, and the very emanation of thought will reveal to you how faith in those things that are not visible was found in those that are visible. That's where I found my faith in the things that I, could, I couldn't deny. Them. Those that belong to the unbegotten Father, whomever has ears to hear, let him hear. Right, no. The Lord of the universe is not called Father, but for Father. He came before. All right, so he's not Father, he's for Father. The beginning of those that will appear. But he, the Lord, is the beginningless forefather. Seeing himself within himself in a mirror, he has appeared resembling himself, but his likeness appeared as divine self-father and as confronter over the confronted ones. Right? you got to confront things. Now, first existent unbegotten father. He is indeed, listen to this, he is indeed of equal age with the light that is before him. He, he, he's, he's, he started the light. He's equal age. That just blew, blows me away. For, for them to write that, that's the only possibility. He is the beginning light of the universe. He is of equal age with the light that is coming out before him. But he is not equal to him in power. Right? I'm not sure how to take that. No. Afterward was revealed a whole multitude of confronting self-begotten ones. There was all kinds of monsters and crazy things, equal in age and power, being in glory and without number, whose race is called the generation over whom there is no kingdom. They were just out of control. From the one in whom you yourselves have appeared from these men, we are from these, these out of control ones. that they, they had no kingdom. They had no control. So we appear from these men. And that whole multitude over which there is no kingdom is called sons of the unbegotten Father, God, Savior, Son of God, whose likeness is with you. Now he is the unknowable who is full of ever imperishable glory and ineffable joy. They, are, they all are at rest in him, ever rejoicing in ineffable joy and his unchanging glory and measureless jubilation. This was never heard or known among all the aeons and their worlds until now. You know, what I just said it sounds to be completely wrong. It says, this is what threw me off, and maybe I'm not off, maybe I am off. I don't know, you take it the way you think. It says, Aft afterward was revealed a whole multitude of confronting self-begotten ones. They Self-begotten means they came up, up by themselves. Equal in age and power. Right? So they're apparently the same age and power as the light from God, the self-father, the real first existent unbegotten father. He's the father of all this. Now, they were self-begotten, but they were equal in age and power. That's pretty hard. Let's think about that a lot, because there was a multitude of them. And they were confronting. Now, does that mean they were pushing, aside, I'm in charge, get away from me, and so on. And afterward was revealed a whole multitude of confronting, get away from me, I'm in charge, self-begotten ones, equal in age and power. I got as much power as you, I'm taking over. Being in glory and without number, there was bazillions of them. 
now whose race is called the generation over whom there is no kingdom. So they were just all equal in power and, and age and and um, it looks like they were they were fighting, they were confronting. This is something I'm not sure about. Alright, there is no kingdom for one in whom you yourselves have appeared from these men. We have no kingdom. We have no you know, we're sort of renegades. I don't know, but then he goes on to say this, this is where it is, all that ineffable joy and everything's wonderful. And I don't know, somebody's going to have to reread that one. See, it ends up that it says they, they are all at rest in him, ever rejoicing in ineffable joy in his unchanging glory and measureless jubilation. This was never heard or known among all the aeons and their worlds until now. Matthew said to him, Lord, Savior, how was man revealed? The perfect Savior said, I want you to know that he who appeared before the universe in infinity, infinity self-grown, self-constructed Father, so he's self-begotten, being full of shining light and ineffable in the beginning when he decided to have his likeness become a great power, immediately the principle or beginning of that light appeared as immortal androgynous man. Androgynous means you're male and female both. Alright, so the light appeared as immortal androgynous man. The black and white particles, that's all I can tell you. Androgynous means you're both sexes. Let's just be sure of that. Alright, androgyny. They have the possession of both masculine and feminine characteristics. They, both sides of the coin be expressed with regard to biological sex, gender identity. They got a little issue with that, female or male or both. Now this should rock your world right here. Listen to this very carefully. They're talking about the self-grown, the self-constructed Father, the, our God, being full of shining light, ineffable, in the beginning when he decided to have his likeness become a great power. Immediately, the principle or beginning of that light appeared as immortal, androgynous man. So immortal, androgynous, we just talked about that, has female and male characteristics, man. Alright, so at that instant when he decided I'm going to become something, it became an immortal androgynous man. That through that immortal androgynous man, they are might they might attain their salvation and awake from forgetfulness through the interpreter who was sent, who was with you until the end of the poverty of the robbers. We are literally being being robbed. Let me just show you something what was written about what's going on with the teachers and so forth. I have never really read the Bible, sat down and read it. it, it these things have just dropped on me, literally, I'm serious. One of the first ones was about Jesus coming down off of the Mount of Olives and being told to, to tell his disciples to shut up. And he said, if I, I tell them to shut up, the very stones will cry out. And that's what they are doing now. And the, that's your teachers. Here's Titus 1.16, they claim to know God, but by their actions they deny Him. They are detestable, disobedient, unfit for doing anything good. If you go and talk about religion or Jesus Christ or God or Muhammad or any of that stuff in school, right away you're done. Now listen to this, it says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. 3 John 1.4 Listen to this one. This is about Typhon, the gigantic dragon that's in the desert. I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportions. They are not concealed. They were forever, until now. And they just came to light a few years ago. Now listen to this about teachers. This is 2 Peter 2. False teachers and their destruction. All right, now this was written back in those days, and it said, there were false prophets among the people, 
just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresy, which there's no God, there's none of that stuff, there's no, you know, creation, all that's nonsense. So they, secretly, they're forcing you to say this, otherwise they will fail you. So they secretly and forcefully introduce destructive heresy, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them with his own life, and this will bring swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and just repeat what they say, and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. There is no truth now. In their greed, these false teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. It's just being made up. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them and their destruction has not been sleeping. That is not good. I always thought this was kind of cute. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They just they can't accept the truth according to their own desires because they have itching ears. <laughs> they will heap up for themselves teachers. <laughs> They're going to make a heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables from the teachers. This is exactly what's happened now. Exactly. Listen to this one. This one was one of the first ones to drop them, and I mean drop right out of the sky. 1 Corinthians one twenty seven. Brothers, consider the time of your calling. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly and despised things of the world and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. <laughs> that could be my resume. <laughs> Here's another one. I think I, I didn't show you this one. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago secretly slipped in among you. They're ungodly people, and that's a fact, who have perverted the grace of God into a license for immorality and to deny Jesus Christ our only sovereign and Lord. And, and you cannot go against them. If you don't have a degree from them, then you, you, you're enslaved virtually, you're going to go in the fields. And to get a degree from them, you have to pay them. Not only do you have to pay them, you have to agree to say what they tell you to say, and then they'll say you're smart because you said what they told you to say. I say, think for yourself. All right, I don't want you to think I understand this, because <laughs> I don't. A lot of stuff I don't understand. I am assuming that the poverty of the robbers are the people that are, have us under control. And it's also in quotations here, it says, and his consort is the great Sophia, that's wisdom, I, I believe, who from the first was destined in him for union by self-begotten father. That's the one who created himself. From immortal man. All right. So let's read that again. His consort is the great Sophia, who from the first was destined in him for union by self-begotten father from immortal man, who appeared as first and divinity and kingdom for the father, who is called man, self-father, revealed this. It's kind of confusing. He created a great Aeon, whose name is Ogado, for his own majesty. Uh, I, I think all this is the same creation. I think. Self-begotten Father from immortal man, who appeared as first in divinity and kingdom, for the Father who is called man, self-father, I think it's all the same entity, right? I, I, but I don't know. These are the kind of things that would be nice to have a good conversation with somebody that had some input. But anyway, he was given great authority and he ruled over the creation of poverty. He created gods and angels and archangels, myriads without number for retinue, 
from the, that light. It's always about the light and the tri male spirit. Tri male. Everything's about male. And there's one one statement in in uh, the Gospel of Thomas that's just I don't know how to take it. It's about about you have to be male. Females can't get into heaven or something. I mean, it's just very very strange. That's why I'm saying all these texts. I can't, uh, uh, you know, um, vouch for any of them other than they're very interesting. And as far as I can tell, Jesus Christ was the only one that came back. He knew the earth was a corpse and a body and a bunch of things. And you're going to be really upset when you figure out what's going on. Or, I mean, and it, it, it's just one thing after another. And all of his his uh, miracles were all documented. It, this was not a, a nobody. This this guy was understood, and he had a purpose it appears and, and now it's being fulfilled looks like to me it's all starting to come right down the road and I mean down the road fast it looks like to me but who knows all right so here it is again he was given great authority he ruled over creation of poverty he created God's angels archangels myriads without number from that light he created all these things now uh, for from this God originated divinity and kingdom Therefore, he was called God of gods and King of kings. All right, so this is the one that's in control of this solar system or universe, I'm not sure. Again, this is, this is all very, very deep, and I, I don't have the answers. First man has his unique mind within and thought, just as he is it, thought and consideration, reflection, rationality, and power. You have to do all these things before you can exercise your power. Otherwise, you're irrational. You, you just, you, you don't consider the consequences of your actions. You just immediately reflect. These you have to go first, then comes the power. All the attributes that exist are perfect and immortal. In respect to imperishableness, they are indeed equal. But in respect to power, they are different, like the difference between father and son and son and thought, and the thought and the remainder. As I said earlier, among the things that were created, the, no, the monad is first. You see this? The monad, this is what a monad is. It's an elementary, individual substance which reflects the order of the world and from which material properties are derived. It is light. Light is the moad. You see this? As I said earlier, among the things that were, recre were created, the monad was first. The light. Everything came from the light. And after everything, all that was revealed appeared from his power. All that light. And from what was created, all that was fashioned appeared from that light. From what was fashioned appeared what was formed from all the light. From what was formed, what was named. And they named different categories of materials. Thus came the difference among the unbegotten ones from beginning to end. Then Bartholomew said to him, How is it that he was designated in the gospel man and son of man? To which of them is this son related? The Holy One said to him, I want you to know that first man is called begetter. He begets everything. Self-perfected mind. He reflected with great Sophia, his consort, and he came up with a perfect plan and revealed his first begotten androgynous son, which was basically both sexes. His male name is designated first begetter, son of God. His female name is first begettress, Sophia, mother of the universe. All right, so the two of them make up the universe. And I think that might be the black power and the white power. Some call her love. Now first begotten is called Christ. Since he has authority from his father, he created a multitude of angels without number for retinue from spirit and light. All right, just so you understand, he has authority from his father, the big God, 
and he created a multitude of angels without number for advisors. Retinue means they're advisors from spirit and light. So he took from spirit and light. Right? His disciples said to him, Lord, reveal to us about the one called man that was also that we also may know his glory exactly about man. Now, the perfect Savior said, Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. First begetter father is called Adam. Right? Eye of light. So Adam's eye of light. Everything is light. Because it came from shining light. And his holy angels who are ineffable and shadowless ever rejoice and shadowless. That's dark matter. He's holy angels. So he came from the shining light. Holy angels are ineffable and shadowless. I'm going to have to think about that more. That's interesting. That is very interesting. Alright, so they are shadowless ever rejoice with joy in their reflecting which they received from their father the whole kingdom of son of man who is called son of god is full of ineffable and shadowless joy an unchanging jubilation unchanging is what the dark matter does it doesn't it never changes all right rejoicing over his imperishable glory which has never been heard until now nor has it been revealed in the aeons that came afterward and their worlds. And none of this stuff has ever been known that I know of. I came from self-begotten and first infinite light that I might reveal everything to you. Uh, apparently this is Jesus speaking. Now, he said again, his disciples said, tell us clearly how they came down from the invisibilities from the immortal to the world that dies. How did they get here? All right, so they, they said, tell us clearly how they came down from the invisibilities. We're up in a, must be up in heaven. From the immortal to the world that dies. So you're up there immortal. How did you get down here to where you can die? Perfect Savior said, son of man consented with Sophia, his consort and reveal a great androgynous light, which is also male-female light. His male name is designated Savior, begetter of all things. Female name is designated All Begetress Sophia. Some call her Pistis. That's where the Pistis Sophia comes in. All who come into the world like a drop from the light are sent by him to the world of Almighty that they might be guarded by him in the bond of his forgetfulness, bound him by the will of Sophia, that the matter might be revealed through it to the whole world in poverty, concerning his Almighty's arrogance and blindness and the ignorance that he was named. This is, very, this is just too confusing for me. I have no idea what that means. None. Zero. I, I mean, it's just, I, I don't know how to take it. He says, but I came from the places above by the will of the great light. I, I, who escaped from that bond, I have cut off the work of the robbers. Now, this must be Jesus speaking. <laughs> yeah, it is Jesus speaking. He's cut off the work of the robbers, which had taken over society. And they weren't doing the will of God. They were doing their own will to get rich. So he says, I have awakened that drop that was sent from Sophia that it might bear much fruit through me and be perfected and not again be defective. All right? But he joined through me, the great Savior, that his glory might be revealed. And it's being revealed now. So that Sophia might also be justified in regard to that defect, that her sons might not again become defective, but might attain honor and glory and go up to their father and know the words of the masculine light. There goes the masculine again. Well, I'm telling you right now, what I see is nothing but self-interest and it's just not a good place at the moment. All right. 
you were sent by the Son, who was sent that you might receive light and remove yourselves from the forgetfulness of the authorities and that it might not again come to appearance because of you, namely the unclean rubbing that is from the fearful fire that came from their fleshly part, tread upon their malicious intent. Then Thomas said to him, Lord Savior, how many are the aeons of those who surpass the heavens? The perfect Savior said, I praise you because you ask about the great aeons, for your roots are in the infinites. Way up there, that's where uh, the stream of light they call it, I believe. Your roots are in the infinites, infinities, infinities. Now, when those whom I have discussed earlier were revealed, he provided. All right. Now, when those whom I have discussed earlier were revealed, self begetter Father very soon created twelve aeons for advisors, for the twelve angels. All these are perfect and good. Thus the defect in the female appeared. Here's a game right here. Thus the defect in the female appeared. This is, this is uh, quite strange. And he said to him, How many are the aeons of the immortal starting from the infin infinities? The perfect Savior said, Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. The first aeon is that of the Son of Man, who is called First Begetter, who calls Savior, and who has appeared. The second aeon is that of man, who is called Adam, Eye of Light. That which embraces these is the aeon over which there is no kingdom. All right. The aeon of the eternal, infinite God, the self-begotter aeon of the aeons that are in it, of the immortals whom I described earlier, above the seventh that appeared from Sophia, which is the first aeon. Again, no idea. Now, immortal man revealed aeons and powers and kingdoms. Right. Immortal man revealed all this and gave authority to all who appeared in him that they might exercise their desires until the last things that are above chaos. For these consented with each other and revealed every magnificence even from spirit. Multitudinous lights that are glorious and without number which appear to be the stars. These were called in the beginning, that is the first aeon, and that's the second, the third, the first is called unity and rest. All right, and that's also called movement and repose. Each one has its own name, for the third aeon was designated assembly from the great multitude that appeared in one, a multitude revealed themselves. Now because the multitudes gather and come to a unity, we call them assembly of the eighth. It appeared as androgynous and was named partly as male and partly as female. The male is called assembly, while the female is called life. That it might be shown that from a female came the life for all the aeons, and every name was received, starting from the beginning. For from his concurrence with his thought, the powers very soon appeared who were called gods. From his thought, the gods appeared, and the gods of the gods from their wisdom revealed gods, and the gods from their wisdom revealed lords, and the lords of the lords from their thinking revealed lords, and the lords from the la 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 la, and they power revealed archangels. The archangels from their words revealed angels. From them, semblances appeared. I mean, it just goes right down the line. I'm going to build this, and that's going to make that, and I'm going to have some, these people work for me, and those people are going to work for them, and basically that's what it is. It's a hierarchy of, of authority and powers. So from them, semblances appeared with structure and form and name for all the aeons and their worlds. So they knew who was in charge everywhere. Now, the immortals whom I have just described all have authority from immortal man who is called silence. I don't see much of that. Because by reflecting without speech, all her own majesty, majesty was perfected. By reflecting without speech, she was just beautiful. For since the imperishabilities 
had authority, each created a great kingdom in the eighth, also thrones and temples, firmaments for their own maj majesties. For these all came by the will of the mother of the universe. Firmaments are basically the ionosphere that surrounds the earth. That's a firmament, and that's what's scrubbing. That's why it's so hot out there. You know it's almost 3,000 degrees. Way out in the, what you can call the firmament if you want, it's the ionosphere. And the reason is that we're scrubbing through space as we're spinning. At one time the earth might have been flat. It's certainly not flat now, and it is scrubbing, and it's overheating because we're blowing up the atmosphere by burning, and it's getting bigger and bigger, scrubbing harder and harder. That's the reason, and then all the turmoil and hurricanes and floods and weather pattern changes. No, let's get back to this. They all came by the will of the mother of the universe. Then the holy apostles said to him, Lord Savior, tell us about these who are in the aeons, since it is necessary for us to ask about them. The perfect Savior said, if you ask about anything, I will tell you. They created hosts of angels, myriads without number, for, for advisors and their glory. They wanted them to praise them. They created virgin spirits, the ineffable and unchangeable lights. For they have no sickness or weakness, but it is will. Right? And they came to be in an instant. Right? Thus the aeons were completed quickly in the heavens and the firmaments in the glory of immortal man and Sophia, which was his consort. The area from which every aeon and the world and those that came afterward took their pattern for their creation of likenesses in the heavens of chaos. And like I say, at one time it could be flat. The whole earth could have been a flat spinning disk. I don't disagree with that, but it's not now. And everything does condense. So anyway, the, the, this is the pattern of their creation of likeness in the heavens of chaos, possibly, and their worlds. And all nature, starting from the re revelation of chaos, are in the light that, that shines without shadow and joy that cannot be described an unutterable jubilation they ever they they ever delight themselves on account of their unchanging glory and the immeasurable rest which cannot be described among all the aeons that came to be afterwards and all their powers now all that i have just said to you i said that you might shine in light more than these Mary said to him, Holy Lord, where did your disciples come from, and where are they going, and what should they do here? Perfect Savior said to them, I want you to know that Sophia, the mother of the universe, and the consort, desired by herself to bring these to existence without her male consort, but by the will of the Father of the universe that his unimaginable goodness might be revealed. He created that curtain between the immortals and those that came afterward, and that conscious consequence might follow. She shouldn't have done it by herself, I believe, is the cut into the chase. Now, every aeon and chaos that the defect of the female might appear, and it might come about that error would contend with her. And these became the curtain of spirit from the aeons above the emanations of light. As I have said already, a drop from light and spirit came down to the lower regions of the Almighty in chaos. All right. They molded forms might appear from that drop, for it is a judgment on him. Archbegetter, who is called Yeldabaoth, that drop revealed their molded forms through the breath as a living soul. It was withered and it slumbered in ignorance of the soul. It didn't, it didn't realize it even had a soul. When it became hot from the breath of the great light of the male and it took thought, names were received by all who are in the world of chaos and all things that are in it through that immortal one when the breath blew into him but when this came about by the will of mother sophia so the immortal man might piece together the garments there for a judgment on the robbers all right which to me is academia 
Then he welcomed the blowing of the breath, but since he was soul-like, he was not able to take that power for himself until the number of chaos should be complete. That is, when the time determined by the great angel is complete, which I think is now. Now I have taught you about immortal man and how I have cho loosed the bonds of the robbers from him. I have broken the gates of the pitiless ones in their presence. I have humiliated their malicious intent and they all have been shamed and have risen from their ignorance. Well, they haven't risen yet. Because of this, then I came here and they might be joined with that spirit and breath and might from two become one, just as from the first that you might yield much fruit and go up to him who is from the beginning in ineffable joy and glory and honor and grace of the Father of the universe. All right, continuing on, whoever then knows the Father in pure knowledge will depart to the Father and repose, and just take it easy, in unbegotten Father. But whoever knows him defectively will depart to the defect and the rest of the eighth. That sounds like hell. Now, whoever knows immortal spirit of light, here we go again, the light again, in silence, through reflecting and consent in the truth. Truth is the most important thing. Let him bring me signs of the invisible one, which I think I have, and he will become a light in the spirit of silence. Whoever knows a son of man in knowledge and love, let him bring me a sign of son of man. And I think I've done that too. That he might depart to the dwelling places within the, those in the eighth. Behold, I have revealed to you the name of the perfect one, the holy will of the mother of the holy angels, that the masculine multitude may be completed. The masculine, again, the multitude may be completed here. That there might appear in the aeons the infinities that those that came to be in the untraceable wealth of the great invisible spirit, they that all make they that all might make from his goodness even the wealth of their rest that has no kingdom over it. So you're going to really be up with God and nobody's going to be able to tell you anything. I came from first who was sent that I might reveal to you him who is from the beginning because of the arrogance of the arch begetter and his angels. All right, the arch begetter sounds like it's probably Satan and his angels, since they say about themselves they are the gods. I came to remove them from their blindness, that I might tell everyone about the God who is above the universe. Therefore, tread upon their graves, humiliate their malicious intent, and break their yoke, and arouse my own which is Jesus, get him up, pumped up because we can do this. I have given you authority over all things as sons of light. We all have this authority. Do not waste it. Do not waste this authority. Make sure you speak up. I have given you authority over all things as sons of light. And I'm going to give the daughters authority too. How about that? that you might tread upon their power with your feet. All right, you got to speak up. You don't speak up, it's just that they, they own us. Now, these are the things the blessed Savior said, and he disappeared from them. Then all the disciples were in great ineffable joy in the Spirit from that day on, and his disciples began to preach the gospel. See, they went out and they said exactly what he told them. Don't waste that power. you got the power. I give it to you. Make sure you spread it around. And this is all the um, Nag Hammadi texts, the, the Gnostic stuff. And, you know, like I said, you take it or leave it. It's up to you. But that's where it's coming from. This is the Sophia of Jesus Christ. 